writing what's referred to as the title and summary for propositions to be put on the ballot. Well, it's, it's funny. I mean, I, I can see maybe not calling it the California Jobs Initiative because it doesn't really create jobs. It just says, until we can afford it, we're not going to do this thing that nobody else is doing. You know, on global warming. He changed the title from California Jobs Initiative to, this is not verbatim, but it's pretty damn close, suspends the requirement for major polluters to report and reduce emissions of gases that cause greenhouse uh, global warming. <laughs> well, of course he wrote it before the Gates phenomenon. Now, many of you that are following water and the version of water around the Delta and stuff have heard about the Gates Project, which is basically a big, you know, gate to send water south. There's another Gates, and it's not Bill, and this gate is referred to as Climate Gate, Amazon Gate, Himalaya Gate, China Gate, Frog Gate, FOIA Gate. I mean, I didn't know that the Gates family was so big. It all started back in November after your last presentation on global warming. And what it is basically is fraud, cheating, lying, and stealing on the part of a university in the UK called East Anglia University, wherein sits the Climate Research Unit. They distorted data, they hid data that conflicted with their preconceived notions and violated the law in Great Britain. In Great Britain they have a law that is analogous to our Freedom of Information Act, which basically says government funding and research and stuff has to be made public to those who request it. Well, they refused, and they refused, and they refused. And there's now in Great, in Great Britain an indictment against the chief scientist of the East Anglia University's Climate Research Unit for violation of the Freedom of Information Act. There's also calls in the United States Congress and the Senate by one of my heroes, uh, Senator James Inhofe, on the, on the same predicates. Now, Last December, the federal EPA issued what they refer to as an endangerment finding. Endangerment finding says, we find that emissions of XYZ are a threat to public health and safety, therefore they are endangering and we will regulate. They're going to regulate CO2 emissions, not just from automobiles, but from everything. And by everything I mean sourdough bread to cement. I don't know if you know how to make sourdough bread, but the little yeasties get in there, and guess what they do? They breathe out. They breathe out carbon dioxide. Even less well known is how they make cement. You know what? It was concrete. They make cement by digging rocks out of the ground that are called limestone. And, they cook them. and when they cook them, it turns calcium carbonate into calcium oxide, the fundamental ingredient for cement. For every pound of cement, you get about three quarters of a pound of carbon dioxide. That's not including the fuel used to, to do the cooking with. Right. We have politicians today talking about, we've got to rebuild our infrastructure, we've got to repave our freeways, we've got to rebuild our bridges, we've got to, we've got to use tons and tons of cement. But on the other hand, they're willing to impose a $60 per ton i.e. $60 per ton of cement, tax for the permit to make cement. Well, the good news is, the only one that's succumbed to this virus is California. We can fix spread to the rest of the country. Because guess what? Then we start importing cement from Mexico, <laughs> from China, from India. Well, hey, how do we get the cement here? Well, we put them on ships. Well, guess what? More CO2, we're going to cement here.
<laughs> we, we hear from the president and from the governor of this great state about the promise of green jobs. I love green jobs. Now, Richard mentioned, uh, uh, I think, that I went to uh, college down in San Diego. My major was chemistry. But there's a specialty in chemistry called spectroscopy. And I know it sounds like a medical procedure, but it's not. <laughs> Spec spectroscopy is simply the science of the interaction of light with matter. So I'm a, I'm a colored guy. Sometimes people ask me what T-squared and associates do. And basically, we're just colored consultants. <laughs> Green is fine. Red's fine. Yellow's fine. Blue's fine. I don't care what color the job is, just get some jobs here in California. <laughs> I had uh, some debates with some of the Democratic advisors and members and uh, electeds. They kept saying, well, you know, green jobs are the fastest growing source of new jobs in California. Well, yeah, when you start at zero, anything is... You know, yeah, fact. I said, well, over the last year, we've created 135,000 green jobs. Okay, that's pretty, that's impressive. How does that stack up to the two and a half million folks that are out of work in California? And the two and a half million folks that are out of work in California only includes those that are still looking. It does not include those that are so depressed they've given up or that have moved to Arizona or somewhere else. The other thing that, a little tidbit, you know, I love venture capital. I'd like to see some of it sometime. <laughs> you know, $9 billion invested over the last two years in venture capital in, in green tech. Well, the state unemployment insurance fund had a deficit last year, one and a half times that big. So when we talk about green jobs, we talk about venture capital and all that sort of stuff, great. But put it into perspective. Now I'm going to talk about cap and trade a little bit in perspective too. We could shut California down entirely and guess what the temperature differential will be in 2050? <laughs> well, it's not exactly zilch. But using, using the IPCC's own models, I'll describe what's wrong with them in a minute. But using the IPC's own models, less than five one thousand of a degree. <laughs> Close enough to zilch, yeah. It, it never ceases to amaze me the focus on precision that regulators have completely blind to accuracy. How many, know, how many out there know the difference between precision and accuracy? Good. God, I love you folks. <laughs> significant on something they have no idea about what ballpark. <laughs> A little bit about the modeling itself. This is the IPCC general circulation models. There's only one thing better than the IC, uh, the IPCC's general circulation models, and that's economic models. That was supposed to be funny for me. <laughs> are, are there any economists out there? <laughs> any economists out there that are willing to raise their hand so I can see it? Okay. The, the general similar to what you know any other IO model does, and it's a, it's a form of regression, appropriately called regression. <laughs> Technically, it's also referred to as regression. What they do is they take a time series of temperature and other factors, and they try to determine what the relationship between the temperature is and what the level of CO2 is, and solar radiation, and all these other things. And this is at the heart of the climate gate scandal. The temperature series 